Hey, what's up? Today we're going to talk about Georgia Tech's reinforcement learning class as part of their online master's program. I took this class back in like fall 2021 or something, and it was a really tough course, but I'm here to walk you through it. So let's get started. All right, so let's talk about Georgia Tech's reinforcement learning class as part of their online master's program. So I took this class in the summer of 2021. It was pretty hard, actually. It was like 20 hours a week of work. But the good thing is there's a huge curve at the end of the class, so I got a B still with a 68%. So what is reinforcement learning? So basically, it's getting your computer to make these tiny little updates to itself and learn what to do in a specific environment. And this class has basically three things, homeworks, projects, and one exam. Your homeworks are pretty low in terms of your final grade. Your projects are medium sized, but your final exam is huge. It's like a quarter of your entire grade. Um, so let's talk about homeworks really quick. So the homework one is basically implementing this thing called a Markov decision process, which you find the expected value of points that you would get when you roll a certain die and the die has like a specific probability of each side being rolled. It's a little tricky. I mean, they give you the algorithm in the book and you're basically just supposed to code it up. And then we got homework two. So this is called the Lambda return. And you're gonna do this thing called temporal difference learning. And temporal difference learning is basically a reinforcement learning model, but you're like following the pattern over time and making small updates. It's honestly really confusing. This whole class I found like to be super, super confusing. But I've put in my two cents here about what helped me to f solve this problem. All right, project one is the first project. So temporal difference, it's like the same as your homework two, but you are now going to read a paper that was kind of the founding paper of reinforcement learning for temporal difference learning, and you're gonna implement the exact experiments that this guy, Richard S. Sutton, made in his first paper. So you gotta read this pretty carefully. I've annotated it a bit for you guys, the things that I thought were important when I took the class. But once you understand the paper, you're supposed to implement the experiments that this guy made and write about it in your own paper. And I would suggest to use this fancy paper format from like the um, like engineering world or whatever. It just makes your paper look a lot nicer and I'm guessing the TAs appreciate that and will probably give you a better grade because of it. So homework three is a basically another like toy example with reinforcement learning, but you're changing the update method of reinforcement learning to use this thing called SARSA, which stands for state action reward state action. Again, guys, this was like all like flying over my head during this short summer term. I don't understand it that well, the math and the theory, but essentially you use this open AI frozen lake problem to basically teach your little gnome guy to find its way to the present without falling in the water. <laughs> And they give you the algorithm again, so you just need to like code it, and make it work with OpenAI's uh, like framework or whatever. All right, so now homework number four is a taxi problem. Same idea with OpenAI. You use this other problem they have called taxi to train your taxi to pick up people and drop them off where they're supposed to go. And in this case, you're using queue learning. So I guess queue learning is just another way to update uh, the algorithm for reinforcement learning. Whereas SARSA, the one for homework three, is another one. So you can pick and choose, I guess. But for homework four, you're supposed to do Q-learning, which, again, you'll use in the project two coming up. And for homework four, the Q-learning algorithm is nice because you have a finite state space, meaning this is like a two-dimensional realm. There's a finite number of locations, and there's like a finite number of actions. The next project gets harder though because you have an infinite number of locations and an infinite number of actions. So for project two, let's dive right in. You're training this lunar lander guy. This is actually my lunar lander after a thousand iterations. But anyways, you're training this little spaceship to land between the flags. And the reason that this gets tricky is because 
Now there's like infinite number of coordinates that your lunar lander can be in as well as directions. Like it can be going to the left slightly or a lot or to the right a lot or vice versa. And so you cannot use the same algorithm you use for homework four. Uh, you have to implement something else and they leave it up to you to find that out. But for me, I use this called a deep Q network. Uh, basically it's like, Sorry, it's kind of cut off, but you're trying to train, like this paper's really cool. You're training this module thing to learn how to play Atari games using the pixels on the screen. And so there can be like an infinite number of different kinds of pixels, which maps nicely to this example because you can have an infinite number of locations. So you can use the same setup as they did for their paper. It's just that you have to code it. So like that card can be tricky. I would suggest to start as simple as possible. Like don't dive into all the different parameters yet. You'll just try to keep it simple at first. Watch your model, learn, like change small things at first one by one. See what helps it learn the most. And then once you have like a solid base, then you can start fine tuning your parameters that go into the model. Yeah, this one took a long time, honestly. It is cool though, at the end you can get a little robot to fly around. All right, so homework number five is called a bar brawl. So you get this like 2D array, which basically represents who is present at a local bar from like this village. And some of the people are good people or whatever, they don't fight, and then other people like really fight a lot or something. So you're supposed to calculate the expected chance that there will be a fight at the bar that day. And uh, basically you just follow a paper that they give you so you just exactly like code it up like your other homeworks basically all right number six rock paper scissors so you're also going to explore game theory in this class which is pretty cool steve nash wrote this originally and he's pretty interesting because he was like crazy smart and didn't really have like a ton of uh credentials necessarily but he like wrote something that was like incredible so game theory came from that and you're doing this with rock paper scissors so you're going to basically find out what the Nash equilibrium is for this game. And it's a little confusing, but it's like three lines of code. It's not that much coding. You just kind of have to read the papers they say to you to read, and that's it. All right, last project is correlated Q. So you're going to implement a soccer game and write a paper about it. This gets kind of tricky because, like, you're given uh, basic rules of the game, but, like, you're left to implement it yourself completely. So there's no, like, starter code or anything. You have to make it all up, and you have to make sure that the way you set up the game lets your model learn from it. So you want to structure your your game like easily to learn from it. I don't know; it's kind of hard, honestly. It takes a while, and then you're supposed to write a paper. And like, I didn't do very well on all these papers. Like, project three, I got sixty-five. On project two, I got seventy-six. Project one, I got sixty-three. But I still managed to get a B. So if you're struggling in this class or you're worried about it, like a B can be pretty low. They they curve it a lot. Also, the professor who I think may have had a hand in like making the class really difficult is now gone. So it might be easier now in 2023 at least. So that might be nice too if you plan on taking this. All right, thanks for watching the video. Hope you liked it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. I make more of these as I go along the program and check out my other ones that I've already made. So thanks. See you in the next one.